carried out after the, the curfew were no longer under the protection. They were an unlawful assembly, and we could arrest them for that alone. And that solved so many problems. Uh, and with that, I will just add that people that aren't even protesting, and I know this is a huge inconvenience, particularly when we're talking about curfew that starts at four in the afternoon. Uh, you can't imagine how much uh, better, how much that facilitates our ability to redeploy resources and deal with these thugs and the looters. Uh, and so we're really hoping, and I'm obviously not speaking for any department right now because I'm retired, but from a law enforcement perspective, we're really hoping that the community will get behind the curfew uh, and just stay home for this, uh, which leaves us with the people that are breaking windows and stealing property and fighting with each other uh, and let us deal with those entirely. Sid, tell us a little bit about your background, uh, what your expertise is. We understand you do have an expertise in non-lethal force. And, and then tell us uh, more about when you believe police should use that. Well, uh, yes, that, that has been my interest for, well, now it's almost 50 years. Uh, when uh, PCP, when it hit the streets, it made every non-lethal option available to us instantly obsolete because the, va the vast majority are pain compliance, which means that they induce pain to achieve compliance. Uh, the only two that really don't even to this day are tasers and pepper spray. Uh, the rest still work by pain. And so as a result of that, I began studying it and uh, I started writing some things on it. and. In short order, it went global. I end up teaching all over the world and still do. Uh, there's thank a huge you. amount of it. Oh, We're unfortunate we have to go. We thank you, though, for your expertise in explaining that and, and giving us your insight into what's going on and, and how authorities are able to police this. Thank you, Sid Hale. I mean, we're watching News Chopper 4 right now. We're seeing what appears to be an REI getting broken into. Uh, can we go up to News Chopper 4 right now and see? Gil, are you still with us? Hey, Jonathan, it's actually Eliana up here in News Chopper 4 Alpha that. this time. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Gil just uh, left to go uh, capture something uh, down in uh, the Orange County area. But we are looking at the REI store here on the uh, cross of 4th and Santa Monica, where, as you said, there are looters going in. And here's an additional person coming up right now. They broke, th broke the, gra the glass there on the doors, and they are going in there. We've seen plenty of people come out with all types of recreational equipment, mostly bikes. Uh, so we've seen them uh, go in there for bikes. REI has all sorts of sports equipment in there. And uh, based off of how many things we saw them come out, I'd be surprised if there's more things in there to pull out. But just like that, additional people coming out with more merchandise. And Eliana, are you seeing any police in this area? It appears like a free-for-all right now. Let me double check for you, uh, Jonathan. But at this point, it looks like there are no officers on scene. All right, we're going to ask uh, right now we are continuing to follow what's going on. People breaking in, uh, coming out with uh, merchandise there. Uh, this all started when we went on the air, started following this uh, peaceful protest that was happening in Santa Monica. Now we have seen the looting of shoe stores and now uh, this bicycle shop. People in taking bikes right out. Yeah, Kathy, we've seen people come in and out of the store there. They continue to go in there. The word is out. And there you go. There's one protester who doesn't want these guys messing up. All of they have worked so hard to assemble here in the Santa Monica area. This was a peaceful protest. It's how it all started. And you see this one individual there in the blue jeans and the black shirt. He doesn't want this looting to continue because it hurts the cause. So you saw him try to take that looter down and it prevented at least that person. But I, unfortunately, he's only one person and there's plenty of looters. It's unclear uh, how uh, well he's gonna be able to hold some of these people back. This is just a scene that continues to unfold here. Um, an unfortunate scene, as you mentioned, Eliana, taking away from the message happening just blocks away. That's something that we want to continue to stress, that this is not the peaceful protest that continues to go on just a few blocks away, that these are people who are here to simply steal and loot and rent. People who have come 
to simply steal. And we do see people now, Kathy, uh, time and time again now, kind of in trying to yeah. intervene in, 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 in this situation. It's, it's yeah, incredible. we've seen a lot of people uh, do that. Again, we saw the uh, the person who ripped the uh, license plate cover off. He did pay a price because he got he got socked in the face. But again, you know, yes, we don't qualify them as that. These are people who just are taking advantage of a crime of opportunity and going in and and taking things. Into the It'd be awesome if you'd like this video, hit the red subscribe button, and turn your bell notifications on so you don't miss out on any weekly videos.